Here's a video to get you ready for the Chapter 7 test, which focuses just on arc length and surface area. These were two of the easier topics in the chapter. Um, pretty straightforward, so this should be a pretty quick video. I just want to take you through one of each. We'll talk about one of the toughest parts, which is calculator entry, and then what I'm expecting whenever you do these problems on the test. So the first one says, find the length of the curve given the following information. And that's usually the wording that the test will use as well. It'll talk about the length of the curve. So the first thing you need to do is be able to take the derivative of this function. So I, I made one that was kind of messier for this. So my derivative is a power rule, power out front, power one less. So the derivative of my first term is 3x squared over 2. The second one, if you want to think of it as 1 third x to the negative 1, you're going to do power out front, which is going to make it negative, power one less is going to make it squared in the denominator. Your setup for these problems, it is the integral from 1 to 3, and I have to give you those boundaries, times the square root of 1 plus your derivative squared. So 1 plus this 3x squared over 2 minus 1 over 3x squared, that whole thing squared. So first thing is make sure when you enter in your calculator, you enter this denominator in parentheses, by in its own parentheses to keep it together. The other thing is it's probably going to be easier if you store that particular value in your calculator in y equals. So just to remind you how do you do that, you're going to go into y equals and you're going to type in that function that you want to store as your y sub 1. So you notice that I already did this. So I typed in my 3x squared divided by 2 minus the 1 over the quantity 3x squared. And then just so you can see it's all there. Kind of see that that there. And then I'm going to quit out of that. And when I go to enter my calculator, I'm going to go to math 9. Type in your boundaries 1 to 3. And then your square root of 1 plus. And now you want to get that y1 back. The process for doing that is you go to the variables button, or the one that looks like vars. Go over to y variables hit function, and then whatever you called it, we did it y1. Don't forget to square it. And then put your x here. Your answer, a lot of these are going to be decimals that will not become fractions. If you chest, I'm pretty sure these are, this is a decimal. Yeah, you're not going to get it to change. Just get in the habit of writing the three decimal places. Remember that if it wants a unit, it is just units. It is not anything that's being squared or cubed because this is not area or volume. It is simply a length. So your answer would be 13.007. When I grade this on the test, I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for an accurate derivative, an accurate setup, and then your final answer correct to the number of, to three decimal places. The other topic that we did the second half of 7.4 was finding surface area. And I tried to use the same wording that you should expect in the test. It will usually say, find the area of the surface formed by, and then it will give you three things, the function, the interval, and those are always an x interval, and then what we are revolving it around. And that's the one piece that's going to make the formula a little different. First thing you want to do, as you did with arc length, is find the derivative. So remember, think of this as x to the 1 third. So you're going to do power out front, power 1 less. You're going to end up with 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Your formula has a 2 pi out front. Integral from 1 to 4. The one thing that's different about surface area is you have to put your original function if you're going around the x-axis and your x if you're going around the y-axis. So we're going to put our original function around it because we're going around the x-axis. And then we're going to take the square root of 1 plus that squared. So I'm going to square it out. When I square it out, I get 1 over 9x to the 4 thirds. So here's my setup. Again, same point system. I'm looking, did you take your derivative correctly? Did you set it up correctly? And then that last point is putting in your calculator, because sometimes that's where you might lose a point. This can be one parentheses, one sign can kind of throw it off. When I do this in here, I'm not going to store anything as y1. It's not really as complicated. I am going to just go straight to your integral function, going from 1 to 4. Put in your original function. And here's, again, where you need parentheses, 1 divided by parentheses. 3x to the 2 thirds. Older calculator will also need parentheses around that 2 thirds or using the alpha button to make it a fraction. And then square root of 1 plus your 1 divided by, and again I need parentheses around this denominator, 9x to the 4 thirds. Get out of the parentheses, get out of the square root. There's your answer. And again, you want to make sure that you double it. So times 2. 
and finally put a pi in there. And I don't think this one's going to work out to be a fraction either. So again, hopefully um, everything, that's what you're looking for, everything's set up correctly. Um, you can double check. Where am I going? I'm going to go back and I'm just going to look at the way I enter just to kind of review all that with you just to make sure everything was entered croquet okay, because that's definitely where the bigger questions seem to come from. So again, we have the original function in front of the radical because we're revolving around the x-axis. If you were revolving around the y-axis, you would just put an x there. We have 1 plus the derivative squared, so you can either square it out by hand or you can leave it in parentheses and then put a squared there. We get that answer and we multiply it by 2 because of the 2 that's in front of here. And then we're going to write our answer three decimal places and include pi. If you want to multiply pi through, you can. If you want to just leave it as the um, 1.202 pi, it's a little more concise, a little less rounding to worry about. And that's how you do surface area. Units would be units squared. Again, I'm not going to get real picky with asking for unit. But because it is an area unit, it's a surface area, it would be unit squared. So this just takes you through basic application. You should be able to set up and use your calculator to integrate any arc length and any surface area problem that you're presented with.